This is USBI News, your Virgin Islands connection. Hi everyone, thanks so much for joining us for USBI News. I'm Emily Matson. Project Homeless Connect is back in the USBI and serving those in need throughout the territory. It kicked off on St. Thomas on Friday and will be held on St. John and St. Croix later this month. The event is a chance for agencies to offer numerous free services, including health care, SNAP benefits, food, and also haircuts. Our USBI News, Allie bourne has more. I'm here with Ms. Andrea of Catholic Charities. This has been a phenomenal gathering. Can you share what Catholic Charities has been offering? Yeah, for, for this activity, we've been collaborating with the, especially with the Meeting Our Needs of the Community, MTOC, who is taking you as the lead agency for this St. Thomas activity. We've been, we've done all the training for the volunteers as Catholic Charities. We did all the training for the volunteers who are on the ground today and to prepare them for what to expect and let them know what the, the, the do's and don'ts of this activity. And we have been responsible as usual for feeding the people. So Catholic Charities has prepared all the food. We've got, don we received donations and we have prepared all the meals that the people will need because that's what they need. That's what they will get when they're leaving. When they're leaving, the last thing that they will get is a full course meal. I'm with Ms. Rakia with Human Services. Thank you so much for your time. Can you share what you all are offering and sharing with the community? Yes, I am part of the SNAP Division for Family Assistance where we give out food stamp and cash assistance for needy families. Fantastic. And how important is something like this? I mean, it's been so awesome to see people out here, the smiles, and just the community coming together. It's very important because we are an organization that is in, um, assists with needy families, so anyone that needs help with feeding any babies or any kids or, you know, because food is getting very, very expensive, we are here to help each and everyone here today. And we'll have more coverage of Pro Project Homeless Connect as it prepares for St. John and St. Croix. The Virgin Islands Department of Health receives hundreds of millions of federal money to rebuild a medical complex in St. Croix. The VI Office of Disaster Recovery says FEMA has awarded $251 million to the Department of Health to fund the demolition and reconstruction of the Charles Harwood Medical Complex. After three years of negotiations with FEMA, the Health Department now has the funds needed to get the project started. Asbestos abatement should start by this October, with demolition set to begin on the three-story building by the end of the year. The building was destroyed by Hurricanes Irma and Maria, and local leaders say the complex is crucial to strengthen the health care infrastructure on St. Croix. The state-of-the-art medical complex will offer residents a variety of services, including medical, dental, family planning, mental health care, just to name a few. Also on St. Croix, a project is moving forward to strengthen the resilience of the Walter I.M. Hodge Pavilion. The VI Housing Authority is going ahead with plans to make the development safer by hardening roofs, doors, and windows at the Frederickstead Housing Complex. FEMA has approved $24.4 million for the second phase of the wind retrofit project here. It's a major step to make housing, make sure the housing community is built tough enough to withstand storms. Hurricane-resistant windows and doors will be installed in the development's 20 apartment buildings, as well as its building office, office building and community center as well, which serve 248 families in St. Croix. The record high gas prices come just as millions of Americans are planning their long-delayed summer and uh, spring road trips. So whether you're heading to the mainland to drive around and do touristy things or are just driving around town, here are five tips to help you get better mileage and save on travel. Spring and summer road trips are soaring. According to AAA, the national average for regular gas hit a record high of $4.40 this week. That's up $1.40 since a year ago. It's not impossible that at some point this summer, if things don't turn around, uh, we could see $5. If these record high gas prices have you reconsidering your travel plans, here are some saving tips from Gas Buddy. Experts recommend staying closer to home to avoid long drives. Plan those trips accordingly. Watch your state lines. Of course, some states have higher gas taxes, which will drive prices up. 
And some states have gas tax holidays, uh, which could make it uh, more appealing to fill up in. Number two, shop around. Avoid stations off major highways and use apps to find the cheapest gas near you. Number three, take advantage of discounts. We're kind of resigned to paying higher prices, but nobody should be paying what the retail price is with all of these different options to save. Gas Buddy recommends using a rebate card or joining a loyalty program. Number four, pay in cash, which at times is cheaper. And finally, don't forget this, don't drive as fast. Slowing down even if just a few miles an hour in the interstate can increase your fuel efficiency by anywhere from 5 to 20 percent. Is there relief in sight? Economists say it depends on Russia's invasion of Ukraine. If that hadn't happened, you know, we'd be paying, you know, maybe 325, 350 for a gallon of gasoline. And here's another tip. Keep up with your car's maintenance. Cars get better gas mileage when their parts are maintained, so check your tire pressure and keep clean or change air filters before any long road trips. And as gas prices hit record highs, let's get you a look now at the lowest prices throughout the territory. These numbers are from the Department of Licensing and Consumer Affairs Fuel Price Survey. On St. Croix, the lowest price for regular gas was the One Love service station in Hannah's Rest for $4.40 a gallon. The second lowest price was at the Gasaway service station for $4.48 a gallon. On St. Thomas, the lowest price for regular unleaded was $5.09 a gallon at seven service stations. Those are on your screen. So we're already seeing $5 gas, more than $5 gas in the territory. The first stop, Gasworks, Hometown, Alibaba, the Racetrack, and Racetrack East, all at $5.09 a gallon. And on St. John, the lowest price for regular unleaded was at the Racetrack at $5.44 a gallon. For a check of the lowest prices of higher grades of gas, you can learn more at dlca.vi.gov. The U.S. has surpassed 1 million COVID-19 deaths. In a statement, President Biden said the latest number marks a tragic milestone. He urged Americans to remain vigilant against this pandemic and do everything we can to save as many lives as possible, like getting vaccinated and tested. Biden also stressed the importance of Congress sustaining these resources in the coming months. This comes as reported cases of COVID-19 and hospitalizations are on the rise across much of the U.S. and here in the VI due to a fast-moving subvariant. Flags at the White House and all over the nation are lowered to half-staff to mark 1 million COVID-19-related deaths in the U.S. And we continue to see a big spike in COVID-19 cases all throughout the territory. Cases are up on all three islands right now, jumping on St. Croix and St. John and going down just a bit on St. Thomas, although the numbers are still high. According to the latest numbers from the VI Department of Health, there are currently 1,198 cases territory-wide with 380 on St. Croix right now, 787 on St. Thomas and 31 on St. John. Now to continuing coverage of the baby formula shortage affecting new parents across the nation. The Biden administration says the president is working with baby formula manufacturers and retailers to address the nation's formula shortage. It has parents across the country scrambling to find food for their infants and newborns. Our USVI News, Haley Potter reports. Oh, yeah. Good job. What do you think? 11-month-old Piper O'Keefe is still unsure if she likes what's in her cup, a mix of infant formula and whole cow's milk. Pediatricians say at her age, her baby formula should not be diluted, but her mom, Courtney, says she only has six bottles left. We are unable to find this in any store we've looked at. All of our online subscriptions have been canceled. O'Keefe is certainly not alone across the country. Shelves that carry baby formula are bare due to a supply chain disruption and a safety recall. New York Congresswoman Elise Stefanik has an eight-month-old son and is experiencing the shortage firsthand. This is not a third world country. This should never happen in the United States of America. She and other Republican leaders blame the Biden administration. But it seems that while President Biden's administration and the FDA knew all about this problem as it developed, they have been asleep at the switch in terms of getting production back online as fast as possible. The White House says the president is talking with formula manufacturers and retailers to find some different solutions. Ensuring that lower income families 
can access different brands of baby formula uh, by working through with the WIC to, for the exemptions for the WIC programs. On Tuesday, the FDA announced it was working with formula makers to increase their output and streamline paperwork to allow more imported formula from other countries. Haley Potter, USVI News. Congress plans to address the national baby formula shortage in a hearing later this month.